Well, everyone, it's time for us to go and take a look on how to use your Samsung Galaxy S23 FE. Now, here's what I'll tell you about this phone. Great phone. I'm very happy you chose to pick it up. There's a few things to know about this device, but I think you made a really good choice. And I will tell you the very first thing I'd recommend doing, as always, whenever you get a new phone like this, you want to protect it. So find some sort of case, find some sort of screen protector. That's going to be the best thing you can do. In fact, even like a super cheap a dollar case and a, like a 30 cent screen protector is probably going to be better off than not have rocking any of them at all. So keep that in mind. I'll let you do your research there. But on the exterior, on the front, we're getting a very, very nice, you know, OLED display. I think it's a very good looking display for the most part. It's fairly large. And I do think, you know, in my personal opinion, for this type of phone, 120 hertz, it's a very good looking display. It's probably one of the better displays you can get for a phone of this price tag in the brand new market. On the sides, you are getting a complete almost flat-sided phone. If you're familiar with the Galaxy S23s, it's almost the exact same type of design. So you're getting kind of like a curved side, but not really. It's not reflective, so I actually kind of like this a little bit. You're getting your SIM card tray at the top, microphone at the very top as well. At the very bottom, some more microphone holes, as well as a USB Type-C port. This thing does support Samsung DeX, I'm pretty sure. So you can go ahead and output this thing to a monitor, and you can charge it as well. And you have a speaker girl at the bottom. On the back side, you have your standard plastic back. So this is something that's very nice. Having this type of plastic back is really, really cool. And that's something that I actually do love having on this type of device. You're also getting your triple camera setup as well. So a wide ultra wide telephoto lens, super nice type of lens arrays I kind of have here. You're getting wireless charging, reverse wireless charging as well. And it's a very, very good phone on the outside. Now, in order to actually take out the SIM card tray, you do actually have to have a SIM card removal tool but you also should be able to find some online, some, not online, you should be able to use like a needle or something too if you really want to. But you can output the SIM card just by using the SIM card eject tool that should be coming in the box. So you should see a little hole right here at the very, very top, not the microphone hole, it's the one closest to the antenna band. And what you're going to want to do is you want to basically click into this specific hole just like so. So tap into this hole just like this, it's a little bit harder to do, but just like so, you want to click it in. And then when you do that, you should be able to pry the specific SIM card tray out just like so. And you should be able to put in your SIM card tray on one side. And that's basically it. It fits a nano SIM. So once you put your nano SIM in here, you are pretty much good to go. So now when you go ahead and input it, you can go ahead and make sure you slide it in, you know, as calmly as possible. And then you're pretty much good to go. Then your SIM card should be, you know, adjusted to your specific provider. And then you should be able to use your Galaxy S23 FE with your specific cell phone provider. Now the Galaxy S23 FE does actually have an always on display. So if you tap it one time, it'll basically come up and it'll show you some notifications. If you tap it twice though, you should be able to come into your lock screen. I've already went through the initial setup. It's pretty boring. It's pretty much basic information we all know. So the very top, we basically have our SIM card information. So whoever our cell phone provider is, AT&T, Verizon, whatever the case is, all that information will come up at the very top left. At the top right, you basically see your Wi-Fi connection, your battery icon, all this other stuff at the top right, right there. Now at the very middle, you'll basically see your time. So you can always go through and check out your time, your date, and some other notifications that come up right there. If you want to kind of get a glimpse of all your notifications, they should come up here. If not, if not, you can just tap on the notification right there, and they should also come up in this specific panel as well. At the bottom, you have your phone call icon and your camera icon as well, which is very, very cool. But that pretty much covers it up here. It's pretty much basic information that we already kind of expect. Now hopping up, you'll basically come into your home screen. Not there. Let me just hop out of here. You'll come into your home screen just like this. Now here is where you'll see basically a bunch of information. So at the top, you'll basically have your camera icon, all this other stuff, the same stuff that we talked about before. You'll have your time and app icons and dock and you know your gestures down here. Now you can also move everything around. So you can also like hold down on this little you know, widget if you don't like it. You can also move this cool search icon somewhere else if you hate it. You can also go through and make these icons or these widgets bigger as well by holding it down and making these widgets kind of bigger in these sizes. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you have that option. You can also just go through and delete it, and you can also adjust it whichever way you want to. So you have a lot of customizability with Android. You can also hold down an app icon if you want to and move it somewhere else. You can also hold down an icon and you know go delete it. You can get into this other information here if you want updates or something. So it's another really cool thing within Android. And then at the bottom, you have your dock. So you have your, you know, if you want to drag an application down here, you want to drag one out, you also have that capability. A lot of these applications are pretty basic. Things like phone call will give you phone call capability. Messages, same as I think you can text message people. Google Chrome is your internet browser. And then you have your camera icon that basically will allow you to start taking photos and videos. Now at the gesture down here, you basically have your navigation bar or your gestures. 
As soon as you boot up the phone, you'll have your navigation bar. If you want to go home, it's going to be this middle button. If you want to get into your recents panel where you're like multitasking, you can tap on here and get into your recents. Or if you want to go back into like the back side of an application, you can just tap there and it'll just take you into the back side of where you just were. So another cool thing, now if you want to see all the applications you have on your Android phone, you can swipe up and you'll basically see all the applications that you have. So not all the apps that you have will be added to your home screen, not all the time. In fact, the stock Android, like the stock version of when you actually use this phone, they are not adding to your home screen, you know, natively, which is kind of weird. So you'll see all your applications here. So you can also search for an application if you can't find it by clicking the search bar up here. You'll see Google, Microsoft, Samsung. Samsung separates all these applications like that, which is very funny. You have your calendar, camera, gallery, you know, messages, Netflix, all pre-installed, the Play Store where you download all your applications from. And then as you kind of add more applications, there'll be more and more pages here. So it's like another kind of small thing to keep in mind too. Overall though, pretty basic stuff. I think it's kind of self-explanatory. But I do think it's super cool to kind of go through and kind of utilize these applications and understand what these apps are kind of doing. Now the Google Play Store is basically the main, mainly used application, I would say, from one of your Android phones. This is where you download all your applications. So you can go through here and you can go through games and you can just scroll through and find all these other applications and games that are kind of going through. And basically, as you kind of, you know, search for things, you'll basically find them as you kind of go on. So it's pretty basic. Just find the games that you want to go and install. And that's another thing you can kind of try doing as well. So it's super cool, super, super basic. If you find a game that you like, you can also download it. So let's say you like the Wendy's application or whatever. You can just go and find it, click install, and you can install the application by clicking install like that. Now, on top of that, the other big application I'd recommend getting used to is your settings application. So within settings, if we tap into settings right here, you'll see a bunch of different things available. So you'll see your Samsung account at the very top. So if you logged in, that's great. If you don't, like it doesn't really matter too much. You'll see connections, connected devices, modes and routines, sounds and vibration. A lot of this stuff isn't really that big of a deal, but I will say things like security and privacy, that's a big one, your Google account, advanced features. What I would recommend doing is kind of going through and just kind of getting used to these panels, right? Getting used to all these panels that are available. It's a very, very big thing. If you want to turn on light mode or dark mode, you have this type of capability. One thing I always do is change my screen time out from like, you know, whatever it is to like 10 minutes. That's usually just better for reviewers. But at the very bottom of this panel, there's a very important thing, software update. I would recommend as often as you can, if there's an update available, just go through and update your device. You would not believe how important it is to keep your you know, application and keep your phone up to date as possible because the random issues can go, you know, can happen. Random things can happen all the time. So what I'd recommend doing is going through, finding and seeing if there's a, you know, update available as often as you can and pretty much going through and downloading and installing the latest update. Like I said, you have no idea how often these types of things can basically just fix themselves just by coming here and just, you know, basically updating your phone. So go through there, update your phone. And that's another thing you can probably try doing in order to fix this, you know, if your phone is kind of acting up weirdly. But that is basically at a high level how to use your Samsung Galaxy S23 FE. It's a super basic phone once you kind of get used to it. The only way to kind of get used to this phone, honestly, is by going through and just pretty much just going through constantly time and time again and just using this phone. The more you use it, the more you'll understand it. It's a very, it's not that hard of a phone to use. There's lots of features we didn't even talk about today. If you want like a full breakdown, I do have lots of individual videos on my second channel that you can always watch there if you want like a little bit more of a breakdown on how to use it. But at a high level, that's basically how this, how you basically use this phone. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.